We're going to take a little break here from addressing for a while and talk about the neighbor discovery protocol and how the hosts are going to use that to discover version 6 routers and hosts. And the thing is, NDP, it allows a version 6 host to dynamically discover its neighbors, which sounds fantastic, and it is. The process, though, of discovering neighboring routers is a little bit different than that of discovering other hosts. And we've got to be crystal clear on this for our exam and for real-world networking. So we're going to talk about the router discovery process first, and then talk about how hosts discover other hosts. Now, the router discovery process begins with the host sending out what we call a router solicitation message, an RS, onto its local link. And the destination for this, it's a multicast. So it's not a unicast, it's not going to one particular host, it's not a broadcast because we don't have those in version 6 anyway. This is a multicast and the destination is FF02 double colon 2. And this is the all IP version 6 routers address. Every router you enable version 6 on and then do so on the interface is going to be listening to this address for messages. And that sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? FF02 double colon 2? Or maybe it looks a little familiar because here it is. And by the way, uh, during the break, I took the EUI64 address off the interface and I put the original global unicast address back on, as you can see. And your big hint is that you do not see EUI64 out here next to the global unicast address information. But these joined group addresses, you know, you and I, when we configured IP version 6, we never joined a group manually, but all of a sudden we had these four groups show up. And we're going to see what's going on with all four of these groups here in the next few minutes. And the first one here that we know about, FF02 double colon 2, that's the all IPv6 routers multicast address. So when our host sends a router solicitation, an RS, to FF02 double colon 2, then it's going to hope a router answers it. And when a router on that link hears it, it will indeed answer with what we call a router advertisement, or RA. So we've got RSs going out, and RS, and then an RA in response. Now notice we have a question mark there for destination, because the destination of the RA actually depends on whether or not our host has a version 6 address yet. Now if the querying host has a version 6 address, that would have been in the original router solicitation, and the router looks at that and says, okay, I'll just unicast this RA, this answer, back to that same address. Now, there is a chance that the querying host may not yet have a version 6 address, and if that's the case, the source address of the router solicitation would be all zeros. And the router sees that and says, okay, I'm not going to unicast all zeros. That's our undefined IP version 6 address. So the router will then multicast the RA to FF02 double colon 1, the all IPv6 nodes address. That one sounds a little bit familiar as well. And as you can see, our interface there has also joined that group, FF02 double colon 1. So that's our all IP version 6 host address and the one below it double colon 2 is the all IPv6 routers multicast address. Now, the router is also going to be multicasting RAs every 200 seconds. Do not ask me why they came up with 200 seconds, but you got to admit it's easy to remember. Every 200 seconds, a version 6 router is going to multicast a router advertisement to FF02 double colon 1. So it's a little faster, you know, it depends on the timing, of course, but it is a little faster for the host to just go ahead and explicitly request one rather than waiting for that multicast. But again, our version 6 router there will multicast a router advertisement every 200 seconds to the all IPv6 host address. Now, using NTP to discover version 6 hosts, now we have two different messages here, neighbor solicitation and neighbor advertisement. And this is going to be kind of similar to ART, but there's something called the Solicited Node Multicast Address. It's just as much fun as it sounds. It's really not bad at all, but a little calculation, knowing how to calculate the SNMA is a good idea for your exam. So we're going to take a quick break here, make this video a little shorter, and we'll pick up with the next one. Grab something to write with, and I'll see you there.